Welcome to Physics Lessons Online with Kelly Macbar. Guys, today I am going to be looking at um, paper 6, variant 3, October, November 2016, question number 4, which is new to the newer syllabus since 2016 in that we have a 7 marker at the end of paper 6's involving experimental investigation. For my students, it's page 428 of your classified booklet. Let's take a look at this question and how to answer it. So it says, a student has noticed there are different types of paper that have different strengths. Plan an experiment which will enable you to compare the strengths of different samples of thin paper prepared as shown in figure 4.1. Now, initially, when a student looks at this, they're kind of going to go, hmm, I've never done anything like this. But on closer observation, if we take a close look at this, basically, we're looking at a Hooke's Law experiment with paper. And here is the biggest tip I am going to give to students. You know, a lot of students, when they look at, let me just show you, all of these lines, panic sets in. You know, it's like writing a big essay, and are thinking, what do I do? Well, let me tell you what you do. What you do is you look at each bullet point that's in the exam question. So let's go through them. The ad additional apparatus needed. Instructions for carrying out the experiment, including any precautions you will take. What you will measure. How you will present your results. How you will determine which paper is the strongest and the variables you will keep the same to ensure the comparison is a fair test. Now, like I said, you know, when you look at this and you look at the number of lines, it can seem daunting. But if you will take each bullet point in isolation, you know, I think you'll find it a lot easier. Now, the answer that I'm about to give you, I am not saying this is the only answer that there is, but what I try to do for my students is make it as simple as I can possibly make it. All right, so you've got this piece of wood here, either side, you've got paper in between, it's got a hook, well, it's got hooks either side, and you want to measure how strong it is. How might you do that? You know, what variables are you gonna keep the same? What apparatus do you think you can use in school to allow you to do this? Now look, this year with a lot of students not being at school, uh, for obvious reasons, this will be a particular area of weakness because you've not done any experiments. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get stuck right in and I am going to give you a model answer. But what I want you to think about when I'm giving you this model answer is the bullet points that are being presented in the question itself and how I'm going to use them to answer the question. So first of all, it says any additional apparatus needed. Well, what I'm going to do is draw the setup that I think would be the most useful. And this is going to look a bit like hangman. Okay, it should be a clamp stand. And what we've got is the paper with the wood either side. I would have got a Z minus for that for sure. So here's my paper. Clamp stand. Now labelling is very important, whether you're a good drawer or not. So clamp stand. And then underneath, I'm going to have my slotted masses. And here, I'm going to have a tray containing sand. Okay, so here I've got my experimental setup. It's not this scale, it's labelled. What I've got, I've got a clamp stand holding the paper 
and I've got weights underneath that I'm going to add, known as slotted masses. Normally 100 grams in school, they can be different, but 100 grams, 0 0.1 kilogram or one Newton. Now, the next part is the instructions, and I have a favorite sentence when I'm doing this. So the instructions. Set up the experiment as shown above. Okay, so you might have wondered what I've done here. Well, so far, I've basically, via drawing, said that I need a clamp stand, said that I need slotted masses, and I've also said I need a tray with sand. Now, you might be wondering why it will all become apparent very, very soon. Okay, so what did the next bullet point say? Instructions for carrying out the experiment, including any precautions you will take. So what I would suggest to students is always try to keep this as simple and as concise as possible. So I'm going to add one slotted mass one hundred grams one newton now guys I put numbers in here so I've got something visual going on in my head you know a lot of times when you just look at mark schemes and like add slotted masses without numbers it doesn't really translate in your head you don't need to put the numbers in but I find numbers is helpful. Putting the numbers is helpful to a student in their explanation. Okay. At a time. Until. The paper. Breaks. Okay. Record results in a table. And then repeat the experiment. For different samples of paper. Now what have I done so far? I've done the apparatus and now I'm very briefly explaining how I'm going to carry out this experiment. I'm going to add one slotted mass at a time. Once I've done that, I'm going to check at which weight that it breaks. I record those results in a table and then I re repeat the experiment for different samples of paper. Next, what's to be measured? The applied weight in Newtons that breaks the paper. Now, you may be wondering, haven't we said that already? You might do that. But again, like I said, if you take each bullet point in order, and if you're savvy enough to know that you've already said it, you don't need to say it again. But what I am doing is I'm taking the bullet points that they've given me, and I'm basically making sure that I've stated those, even if I've stated it twice. All right? So we've done the first bullet point, the second bullet point, and the third bullet point. We're about to go on to the fourth bullet point, and you might think again, haven't I said that? I'm going to present it in a table. Well, I have. But I'm going to say it again. So results. I'm going to have a paper sample.
and the force at which it breaks in newtons. Now you do not need to put any results whatsoever into this table because quite naturally you've not actually done the experiment but just an outline as to what you're actually going to measure so you give the examiner an, ind an indication that you understand what's going on. And then the next bullet point, so look, again I'm following it through. Apparatus we did, instructions we did, what we will measure, we've just done it. How will we present our results? We've just done that as well. And then it says how you will determine which paper is the strongest. So the strongest notice I've got these little subheadings. The paper that requires the biggest force to break is the strongest. Okay, and then the last one says the variables you will keep the same to ensure the comparison is a fair test. So guys, what are you trying to measure? You're trying to measure paper breaking. Now, what must you keep the same for all of those? With practice, this will become um, self-explanatory. So fair test, how am I going to keep it fair? Notice again how I'm doing a little subheading for my own. Peace of mind, same width of paper. and thickness of paper. And the one thing I've just realized I missed, if you look way back at bullet point number two, it said any precautions you will take. So I've missed that out. Let me go back and stick that at the end. Precaution. Sandy sand tray to catch weights when they fall. In other words, to stop the weights falling on you. Okay, so they asked for a precaution. That's why the sand tray was there. It was to make sure that this did not fall on top of your feet keeping you completely safe and that is that question guys i hope you found that very useful thanks very much